Hey, keys! Give me the damn keys! Put the knife down! Oh, Give me the damn keys! The I think he stabbed me! What are you? Oof. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. Drop the gun! And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. You get locked into that bad guy, but what's behind him? You have to account for all those rounds if you miss. Let's find out what happens right now on First Person Defender. These force on force scenarios use training guns that fire non lethal projectiles. My name is Sal. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. I run a Cerakote shop and I'm a part-time firearms instructor. I joined the Marine Corps when I was 18 and that kind of started everything. And then when I got out, I went to gunsmith school and now I'm here today. I carry a gun because I'm with my family most of the time. Uh, so I just want to make sure that no matter what, I can make sure that they're safe. Sal's a young guy. He's been in the military. His life right now is firearms. He carries every day. I think he's a great person to have on First Person Defender, uh, but you never know how anybody's gonna perform. I have done force on force training before. However, the training scenario was significantly different um, just because we were training for an overseas deployment and not something here on our own home front. I think it's great because it gives you real time uh, kind of acquisition of, of picking up your surroundings and, and reactions. Every once in a while, we get someone on First Person Defender that comes right out of the barrel, really strong. They do a lot of things right, but there's a lot of elements that go into it. You know, it's not just drawing, presenting, and getting hits on target. It's using cover, making good decisions, not pay, putting other people in danger. So there's a lot that goes into this. I have high hopes for Sal, but I'm really interested to see how he does. As luck would have it, Sal has already been involved in an incident where he had to brandish a firearm, where he had to present a firearm in a carjacking style situation. Uh, somebody tried to open my door, or they did open my door, and they grabbed me by the shirt and tried to pull me out of it. Um, so I, I went straight to guns. Uh, it was dark, and uh, I, I couldn't see if they had anything. I couldn't see their hands, so. Today, we've got a scenario set up that is gonna cause Sal to have to really think. Hopefully, his accuracy is good. Hopefully, he's aware of his surroundings, because tunnel vision can take over, and you can lose track of what's going on behind that threat that's presented to you. And in this scenario, there is going to be a dangerous backstop. Sal makes his way to pick up his wife at her weekly yoga class. Is he ready when an unexpected attack takes place at the yoga studio? All right, so, sir, hey, hey, I just need you to get out of the car. No, this is mine. Dude, I, I need dude, it. I just I've got, got bad this. things happening. I just, I just got this. I just need you to get dude, out. I just no. got this. I just dude, want like, you to come out. Seriously, I worked really hard for this. Hey, you don't make me do, do this. this don't make me do this. Like, you can't do don't this. Don't make me do this. Dude, don't I don't. No, do I, I paid good money for this. Hey, shut up. Dude, you can't. Shut up. This is so un American. Shut up. Stop. I don't care. Come on. No. Get out of the car. No! Ah. Hey, put the knife down! Put the knife down! Hey, keys! Give me the damn keys! Put the knife down! Oh, Give me I the damn keys! The I think he stabbed me! What are you... Oof. Index. 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 Tell me what happened. So we came around the corner. I'm picking my wife up at yoga and they were pointing and at something out the window. So I looked over and I saw some, some guy getting his uh, car jack at knife point. Um, and then uh, I told him to put the knife down. And I saw him come out of the car and asked for the keys and he was yelling at him to give him the keys. As soon as I saw it was a knife, I decided to break from cover and go ahead and advance. So I kept telling him to put the knife down and he wouldn't. He started advancing towards the guy who was carjacking. So I, I took him down. Why did you advance when you saw it was a knife? Tell me why. Well, I was looking to close the distance um, to one, uh, try and ensure better shot placement under stress, okay. um, but two, so that I could uh, try and intervene between the threat and the, the victim. How do you think you did with your shots? I'm pretty sure I hit him. 
Okay, what was your backstop? Uh, so the backstop was back there. Really? So I might have overpenetrated through glass. Uh, Who was in the window? Take a look. The wife. Who else? And my friends. Okay, let's bring in the bad guy for a second. How many times did he shoot? Do you have any idea? I think three. Three? I got three. Got hit once. You got hit once because I heard two hit the wall. Yeah. Or the window. What do you think you could have done better? I think I could have gotten a better side alignment on target. And I think I should have been aware more of what was beyond my target before prosecuting the target. Yeah, you could have come across here, maybe cut him off there to stop him from going after him. Mm -hmm. um, that could have been an option. But there's some things that I'd like to talk about, all right, a reference to training. All right, we can do that right now. All right, Sal. So this is a single pane of glass. There was people right in front of this. Yep. This is just a corrugated steel building. Right, those nine millimeter rounds, even 380s, it no, had me no problem for this glass. People are in danger. You're responsible for every round that leaves your gun. How bad do you feel right now knowing that you put your wife in danger? Pretty bad. Okay, I, do, I would too. I, I would feel exactly the same, but we got to make a point of it because people need to know. Yep. People need to know that it's unacceptable. One of the companies that makes this show possible is Colt. And one of the perfect guns for concealed carry from them is the Colt Defender. This is a 1911, but it's short, still 45. And for those of you who like carrying a 1911, it's a sweet shooter. Check them out. We appreciate their support. So Sal, we're back here at the scene of the, the incident. At what I, point did you take your gun out? As soon as I stepped foot out of the vehicle. Okay, so you were uh, already getting your gun out because you knew what you were going to do. Yep. So let's walk this way. Yep. Let's look at this. So you come here. So I came Man, around and I pied around this This is corner. fantastic cover. If the dude's got a gun, this is great cover. Say we stay here for a little bit and assess what's going on. Mm -hmm. Hey, drop the knife, drop the knife. Good guy runs off, the guy's in the car. What does it hurt that he's here? Now the guy gets out of the car. Andrew, get back in that car. Tell him, drop the knife. Drop, drop the knife, drop the knife. Move. Hey, car keys, bring me the car keys. Drop the knife. All right, where'd he hit you? Uh, left peck both times. Okay, good. So we talked about sights. You hit him in the head once and you missed high twice, mm -hmm. okay? They wanna see the threat. Yep. Well, if you wanna see the threat better, you can keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. You keep two eyes open and look through the gun rather than over the gun. Because a lot of people do this. Yep. They'll, they'll dip that gun down to look over it. They get worried about what's going on. So this was, this was a little better angle yep. because after all, he's coming this way. Maybe he's going into the door. I like to say, I like to see sights with target beyond. As long as I see, you know, target beyond my sights, we're good. So whatever you do, however you decide to do it, you close the distance or you just change your angle. But you have to remember, this is your backdrop. I mean, if it's a restaurant, if it's anything, mm -hmm. you've got, if you've got to change course midstream because you realize things are bad, even if that means he gets past the windows, think about this. Andrew, you keep going after KJ out the door, get your gun out. Tell him drop the knife, drop the knife, drop, drop the, the knife, knife, shoot him in the, the back. Knife. Shoot him. Much better backstop. Right. Much better hits. He's focused on chasing KJ. Yep. You know, perfect world. <laughs> I just showed you the perfect world. Yeah. Nothing's ever perfect, but shooting through the window, shooting through the building and hitting innocent people, that's something you'll never live down. Yep. You'll never live that down. Ruger has been a big supporter of this show forever. And they make a ton of guns for concealed carry and home defense, one of those being the Security 9. You've got full size, you've got compact, you've got a lot of options there and a ton of value. We appreciate Ruger's support. During Sal's scenario, he had a problem with the fourth basic firearm safety rule. Identify your target, the backstop, and what lies beyond. He did a great job identifying the threat, but he missed rounds and hit his backstop, which held innocent people. So we needed him to be able to change an angle. A lot of people take a step left or right to change the angle, but he was confined in between two vehicles. I'm gonna show you how to change an angle by taking a knee 
and putting the backdrop higher above the innocent people. So I'm about 20 feet away from my threat. I'm gonna change up the angle by taking a knee, but I'm also going to aim at the head because I know I can make the shot and it gives me more elevation and a better angle. And that's how it's done. I made it safer for everybody downrange by taking a knee, aiming higher on the threat, and engaging it. First Person Defender, brought to you by Surefire, Gundelio.com, and Ruger. Sal is picking up his wife at the same yoga studio. When the attack happens, is he ready to use the tools he's been taught? I want you out of here, because this is I what I'm taking. Like, I just no. bought this car. Time to get out. I mean, Come I, on, I just let's go. This. This is my let's baby. go, let's go. This is, this is like, hey. the, the, like my dream car. Put your hands off, put your hands That would, off. might seem ugly to most, but it's nice. Put your hands Dude, off. I can't, like. Come on, hey, hey, hey. No, hey. don't touch this. me. Just get this out. is my car, get man. Get out, get out. Fine, get out. fine. Get out, get out. Man, you don't have to get so rough. I think he's got hey. a gun. Keys, hey, gun. keys. I said keys. Put the gun down, no, put no. the gun down. Put the gun down, put it down. Oh. Index, index, index. What happened? Uh, when we came around the corner, it looked like a carjacking was happening, but he didn't have any weapons. He was just getting in the car. So at that point, nobody's life is in danger. And then he said, I think he has a gun and he's proceeded to get out of the vehicle and draw his gun. I told him to drop it and he wouldn't. So I cut around and cut him off and took him out. What was the bad guy doing when you shot him? Uh, he was aiming his pistol at the victim and then it looked like maybe he had a malfunction. So I knew that was probably the time to, to take a shot. So you were the bad guy. What were you doing right then? Was he, is he right? He was right. I pulled the trigger. It was a dead gun, wouldn't go off. And I looked at it like most novices do. What's wrong with this thing? Reseated the magazine and he gave a command. I can't remember what it was, but I looked up at him as I was going to charge that. And that's you were just it. about to punch it out, I was. Him, weren't you? It yeah. was close. So how was your shot placement? I'd say it's pretty good, upper cardiothoracic. <laughs> yes, upper chest area between the armpits and uh, nipples, yes. So I noticed two, th new two things. In the first scenario, you went up and stepped on a knife and dragged it away. Yep. Second scenario, you closed the distance after you shot him and you went over and kind of kicked the gun out of the way. Uh, why did you do that? And just to ensure that there wasn't, there wasn't a threat anymore. Like even if he's not, he's not dead, but he's still conscious, uh, I want to ensure that there's no further threat uh, by disarming him. You got to make your own decisions, but you got to do it for the right reasons. You know, you can cover and he's no, he's not a threat to you if he's down and his hand's not on that gun. Mm -hmm. But we're not big on kicking guns or moving weapons for a couple reasons, because number one, they're evidence. Number two, if you kick a gun, you never know where it's going to end up. Could end up under that car right. or, or it could go off because it could be a piece of crap because his gun Obviously it didn't work the full time, first time he pulled the trigger. Right. Well, I thought you did a lot of things right on that one. Um, I thought you respond well to training. You got good shot placement. You're concerned about your target, your backstop and beyond. Because everybody out there that's watching this needs to understand that it's not just about carrying a gun. Yep. And it's not just about stopping the bad guy. Because if, if you stop the bad guy and you take out somebody innocent on the way, man, that's not something we can live with. Right.
hey, you just watched FPD, and we have a bunch of other stuff that you can find out about all the cool gun stuff we're doing at Gun Talk. So, Facebook, if you like to hang out where your parents hang out, or YouTube, if you like snarky comments and being an expert on everything anonymously, um, Instagram, if you just like to look at pictures, also guntalk.com, also the free Gun Dealio app, also guntalktv.com and guntalktv app. You can watch all of our videos there. Oh wait, also Gun Talk Podcast. We got one of the best podcasts out there, so check it out. Lots of different stuff. Check out all the Gun Talk stuff.